You're watching Offbeat Business TV or listening to the OBBM Network. My name is Susan Hamilton, and wait till you hear the guests that I have today. I'm going to be with Anthony Russo and Lynn Davenport. Both were guests on our It's All on the Line event documentary that will be coming out soon, and I can't wait to share that conversation with you. We'll be right back. Welcome to Offbeat Business TV and the OBBM Network Podcast. CEO and host Susan Hamilton shares vital insight from local DFW leaders on successful life and business. Focused squarely on local family business, it's time for our nation to rise, and we'll do it through a vibrant local business sector that stands up for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Ready to meet your advocates? Here's your host. And we're back. My name is Susan Hamilton. I'm your host. I'm here with Anthony Russo. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and Lynn Davenport. Uh, Lynn Davenport, of course, is host of uh, the, uh, the very popular Social Impact Podcast on the OBBM Network. And you've got Be the Change, and you are talking to veterans all over. Yeah. Uh, I'm noticing, I, I notice more of the veteran community than anyone else. Is that really where you focus? That's where it's ended up. Uh, well, it's, uh, depending on the event. So it's mm -hmm. anything from health and truth and media to, to dealing with veterans and, uh, and creating change in that community as well. With hashtag be the change. That is correct. Hashtag be the change. So, uh, and that's largely on YouTube at this point? YouTube and yeah. Facebook. And Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So you're doing, um, when you're talking about the truth in media, I'm, I want to go like this. What? Yeah. <laughs> or it should be lack there, lack thereof. Lack of thereof. Truth so media. you're talking about the you, you're actually exposing some of those things. Exposing it's an aspect of you I don't know about. So you get to tell right. me about no, it. Right. No, exposing some of it. The key really is, uh, and 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 people have looked to us. Truth will set you free. Started out with its first show about COVID, and then from there there was the George Floyd riots and all everything that had happened. And we start analyzing the way that we're manipulated as people, and it started a conversation, and that's mm -hmm. where it all came from. Uh, but ultimately people have started to ask us, well, how do, you know, how do we know? How do we actually look at a piece of news? How do we look at a, an article and know if it's truth? If it tugs at your emotions, it means you need to do some more research. Mm. And then you cross-reference it, and you can actually utilize mainstream media and just cross and make sure that they actually can match up. If you can't find anything that corroborates the data or if you can tell that it's an opinion, it's not worth really looking at. And that's, that's kind of the problem from day one all the way from COVID to social justice. I think that's interesting that you can tell us an opinion. I mean, can you? I mean, you're a, you're a big researcher, Lynn. You're always, I mean, if I want a clip on something, ba -doom, boom, boom, Lynn's got a clip on something. <laughs> so she's one of the fastest uh, workers of, of that kind of information, to aggregator. I would say you are a fabulous aggregator woman uh, to always make sure we've got those, those clips. What, uh, do you feel, find that, would you say the same thing? Is the, the emotional led, emotionally led stuff might oh, be? Oh, absolutely. When it tugs at your emotions, and I, I, I notice patterns, and so I just, if I start seeing the same thing said over and over again, then I'll connect the two and mm -hmm. show, look, we're being played here. Right. And they always take some sort of warm sounding or a euphemism to, to uh, push these agendas on us. Or they'll tug at your emotions and they'll feature a real situation, but then they're, they're nudging you mm -hmm. towards a certain outcome. I think I yeah. agree with the repetition. <clears throat> if I see it over and over and over again, I think a part of, of my attitude has always been, if it's a bandwagon, I ain't jumping on it. I'm going to watch. Build back better. You, yeah. know, they say, yeah. you saw that all uh, time and time again. They're all mm -hmm. saying it. Yeah, and instantly. breakthrough case. Can't yeah. be a breakthrough anymore if there's that many cases out there. It's just a case <laughs> that somebody just happened to be vaccinated. Like it's just, it is a, it has been gigantic marketing campaign yeah. since day one, and it's kind of perfect time. It's a perfect storm for it all because we we've shortened our attention spans over the last several decades with mm -hmm. different media opportunities, social media, then to things like Vine, even though Vine didn't work. TikTok, you have 30 seconds, and the people that are really spreading the information don't have enough time to look past the headlines. So you are able to manipulate a public based on headlines, and it's so dangerous and, and, and also a great opportunity to truly actually start having conversations and say, wait a second, let's take a beat and have a conversation. I have teenagers and, a young, and young adults, and you can see how it's, it's really permeated all of the social media and the propaganda that they're being fed and the kids, they're not worried about the virus necessarily, but they feel the pressure to pretend like they're worried about mm -hmm. it. 
Because if they don't, then they're hurting their grandparents and they're hurting their... And yeah. It's not that it's not true, but it's impossible to... It's impossible to live quite like that. Really, the way you can protect yourself if you are vulnerable is to protect yourself. But we're not going to... We shouldn't be sacrificing two years, three years, seven years of our life. It's so dangerous. Mm -hmm. No, and, and there's always been a... You know, that was something I was raised to understand. Mm -hmm. You take care of yourself. Take care of your health. And if you're not feeling well, don't go hanging out with grandma. Right. You know, at the when, when I don't know when that was not the case. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I always say that it takes... Who cares more about our families than the local family business? That 80% or 90% now of, of American micro to small business that tend to be family-owned businesses. Who cares more about our children, our parents, our community than us? Because we took a risk to step out in this space. We took a huge risk. We took, a, we took risks that other people were not willing to take mm -hmm. uh, to, to fend for our families. And we didn't do it so that we could just lose it all on a sneeze. Right? And that's who was hurt the most. The, yeah. the largest transfer of wealth so went to the elites, the, the global elites, a very select few. And mom and pops and, and local businesses were decimated. Well, that's the concern that I have right now. And one of the reasons I decided to put together this is all on the line event. Um, you know, we're over here at Grace Point Media Studios, and they just do such a fabulous job of representing the local business community and several other things. I mean, this, mm -hmm. these studios are absolutely fabulous. Um, but, and we just wanted to take a, take advantage of a space where we could share with the business community using all these great tools and really set it, lay it out. Because this is more than <clears throat> all the things that you can tell, hmm. right? It's more than that, and it's faster than that. And we have to provide some type of a resistance uh, or we are going, the, the lifestyle we enjoy here is going to be very, very different. And within months, I mean, we are not... We don't have this whole, you know, 2022 or 2024 election that everybody's talking about. What about what's happening right here, right now, to uh, really put some put the brakes on evil because lives are being lost right now. Yeah, the snowball once it starts going down, it picks up picks up speed and picks up speed, and it's we're at that point now that we can't just stop the snowball. We have to create our own, and I think that some of the things that make humanity great has been weaponized against us and we have the ability to use that weapon and turn it back around on them like just the concept of empathy has been weaponized like oh yeah. if you don't feel sorry for these people you're not a good person and then all of a sudden that creates division and it's all these different little things that they've been touching with us small businesses you're not you're not a your your business is not essential walmart is you can't go vote. I mean, did yeah. that not smell bad the minute we heard it? <laughs> and, it and even right. now, which is very, very dangerous. Sorry, even like now we look at what's going on with them talking about um, uh, voting rights. And they're talking about all the issues and kind of all the underlying bills, which is about voting rights, but not once saying what is truly unfair. They're using marketing terms and they're mm -hmm. weaponizing mm -hmm. our heartstrings against us when in all reality when we can start speaking truth using local businesses and start utilizing these poor people have lost their livelihoods yeah. let's actually start working on the, the everyday american again and let's turn that tide yeah and pitting neighbor against neighbor you see that on next door and on social media <laughs> and it's it's really i mean i look at my neighbors differently now based on where they stand on this mm -hmm. and it, it's it's unfortunate next. and i try not to i've always thought that um that's one of the reasons I never did mask, never bought one, and I refused to wear one, and I insisted on getting out and taking walks. I wanted the neighborhood to see me and see my face. I felt like everything that I do has to set an example. I'm a, I'm, uh, you know, a Jesus freak, and I believe that I'm here to set an example and trying to do the, the best that I can do. So ask me a question. I invite you by here's my face, and I'm going to love you with this smile of mine the best I can. I'm going to try and develop some kind of a connection because one thing's for sure, the world's hurting, and surely mm -hmm. they wouldn't sound like that if they weren't hurting. Confusion causes a lot of pain. That isolation, you know, it didn't take long, I don't think either. Mm -hmm. I don't think it took very long at all for isolation and pain to really mm -hmm. grip our communities in a detrimental way. Yeah, agreed, and, and looking at the fact that we're, we're still masking children when there has been so few few studies providing how it's protecting children in comparison to how it's damaging children. It's so bad. My grandson is home again today. 
He has missed more school because the minute wearing, he wears that, yes, mask. gets him on. And that's terrible because it's not always just missing it. No, he's in breathing treatments. Yeah. He's mm -hmm. miserable. You no know, child should have as many breathing treatments as that child's had to have this year. It's insanity. Well, we don't even get a debate. Even if there were all kinds of, of studies and, and documentation and proof, we don't get to debate that. Mm -mm. It's, they make these arbitrary decisions. Our school board didn't even have the courage to vote on it. They just allowed the superintendent to make that decision. Mm -hmm. When she's consulting with the, the Dallas County judge, and who you know Lauren Davis will be running yes. against yes, when yes, she yes. wins the primary, but uh, and then consulting with the Health and Human Services Department, they are making these decisions. The the taxpayer, the parents, those closest to the children are not able to weigh in on that. No, it's it's a it's a challenge. I'll tell you what. So guys, this conversation. Uh, it's pretty intense, and we are going to go to, to uh, hear from a few of our sponsors, and we're going to be right back and, and finish up this conversation. hope you're enjoying it as much as I am because it's really not all doom and gloom. There's good news on the other side. We'll be right back. What does it mean to devote your life to the truth? Does it mean investigating communist subversion here in America? Does it mean exposing the deadly fentanyl crisis in the Midwest? We're spending late nights and covering deep government corruption. Does it mean persevering over 20 years, even after four masked men set one of our printing presses on fire last year? Because at a time when America's traditional values are under attack, It's the responsibility of righteous journalists to uphold truth and tradition. Business runs on technology, and human beings are creatures of habit. Unfortunately, not all our habits are good. Technology, when it works, is supposed to make our lives easier, creating routines that allow us to protect customer data, track our progress, forecast the future, communicate better, and move much faster. So you need technology solutions that work when you're not working or simply not paying attention. Smart technology solutions, making the complicated uncomplicated. My American dream is to help you stay healthy and energized so you can live your American dream. Our American dream is equipping future generations of American dreamers. My American dream is to protect my community so they can live their American dream. My American dream is to bring you some spice and flavor to your life. Our American dream is ensuring what's most valuable to you. Our American dream is creating opportunities for healthcare providers so they can have their American dreams. My American dream is serving our business community and advocating for all of your American dreams. And we're back. You're watching Offbeat Business TV or listening to the OBBM Network. My name's Susan Hamilton. I'm here with Anthony Russo and Lynn Davenport, uh, both hosts of their own shows and uh, really doing a lot in media to make sure that we are aware of the voice of our community. So thank you so much for that. No problem. Glad to be here. So before we went to break, uh, we were talking, we were just... It, yeah, it's frustrating. Doggone it, it's frustrating, this situation. But we just came off of this really great event called It's All on the Line. And the idea was to really present the case for what is actually happening uh, on a, a, the global agenda, yes, that we can all sense. But then, okay, how is it being implemented here on the local level? And I think it was really, really great. Lynn, you did a fabulous job with the data and the pieces that you brought to our attention uh, because we need to be able to do something. And when we're armed with information, it's, it's very empowering. It gives us an opportunity to do something. But on that local level, I mean, these challenges aren't over. We, we, we can do our mm -hmm. due diligence to vote these people in uh, that we need to, but you know what? It's going to take some time. It's going to take that, I, the amount of time I've sat in the seat. I cannot complain because you've done it more than I have. You've done it longer than I have. 
Uh, but it's hard to sit in those seats at the school board meetings for hours. They're and they're a hundred year old seats, so they're really hard. But <laughs> will get sore. I mean, it, it's not an easy thing. Your back's going to be uncomfortable. Bring your stadium seat like you're going oh to a game. Oh my gosh, yeah. it is something. And you, and the amount of my dad would have called it diatribe. I don't know if that's a word, but the amount of diatribe you got. It's sit political it, theater. You know? Let's be honest. Yes. Uh, and it's true. And you wonder, and you don't really feel listened to anyway. But we made some yeah. dramatic changes all early on, and. And now we're going to have to do it again because they were just they just reversed everything and put our kids uh, back in trouble. So well, they said it was three weeks for the masks, yeah. and that comes up at the end of the month, and we'll see if they extend it. Just yeah, like but, two weeks to slow the spread. I know, but waiting so long, what a frustrating thing. Terrible. So do you, what you know, what are you seeing as is, is our ways to we we can um, really proactively affect the school board and. Well, I mean, showing up, I know, I mean, government is run by those who show up. And before the pandemic, it was you know, me and a, maybe a handful of people, and then the rest were administrators and those who were, you know, were, had to be there. And so it, it is encouraging. I will say the pandemic has, has awakened the parents. They are, they are now paying attention because their kids were at home on devices, and all of a sudden they realized, my kid can't read. Uh, what is it they're learning on Zoom? Mm -hmm. Huh. And they, you know, they're... they're uh, I think they, I better preview that course, and I think that was interesting, too, is just learning <laughs> what on earth... you the, the hoops you have to go in to understand what they're slipping in your kid's curriculum. Well, and they flip the language, or they... they, they what, what we think equity means, they mean something else. And so you have to understand... So it's really like learning another language. It's Educanese or Educeak, <laughs> and I, edu I, I have a glossary like of edubonics. terms. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. And uh, but but I think um, in going back to what, how to advocate, I look at the mask issue as being that is my line in the sand. We have to fight against the mask because the masks are a precursor to the mandatory vaccines, which they, we know they want to push right, them through right. the schools which are a precursor to the vaccine passports, which, which will be on blockchain, which I talked about earlier. And it follows them through, and that's huge. I mean, when you think even like you see, you've got a young daughter, when yeah. you think about the, the age of being a follow, of data following them all the way through, but that's not the only thing. When you dehumanize, that's exactly what, uh, what communism mm -hmm. does, yeah. is yes. this dehumanization. And you're looking at a, a, a generation of kids growing up that don't they? You you think that's fine, but there's a piece of them that's missing. That is, we know it. Their yeah. identity. It's if you destroy someone's identity, the odds that they can stand up for themselves or learn as they should, not even getting the right amount of oxygen. I mean, everything about that whole piece is just ab abhorrent to me. And then those awkward years where the teens they they want to wear the mask because they it's become like a security blanket. Yeah. So those are mm. things that we you know you don't even think about. Yeah, and they and you look at and, and thank thank God we're in Texas where things right. are still bad. Yeah. But mm -hmm. we've we've done this weird thing to children where we've taken away their ability to think, we've yeah. taken away their ability for independent thought, yet we've started to give them responsibility based on the program. And you look in California, California kids can can choose to get vaccinated with at the age of 12, 13 years old without their mm -hmm. parents' consent. Yet we're also saying, no, kids can't make a decision on this. But on this, we can't because it's such an easy bribe. They literally traded a pizza for a kid. They bribed right. a kid. And that's, that's a fact that's actually happening yeah. out there. And I did not realize mm -hmm. that states like California, there is, there is still people that are on the right that are like, you know, this is not okay. And their kids are there, unfortunately. That's why people are leaving in droves. But it's that's a dangerous precedent to set, whether it's that or even if, if you go into the, the gender mm -hmm. thing, the issues that they have in California, yeah. they're allowed to do things before they're 18 years old, before they have a fully developed brain based on what we have studied and researched as a country and as a science, scientific community forever. Well, you can cut off my boobs and so on male appendages, but you cannot change my DNA. And my DNA, quite frankly, if I ended up on the side of a road, you would know if I'm male or female. So there are some things that you're not going to be able to change. And it is unfortunate that, that, that there's so much of that genetic confusion with people today. I just uh, I want to know how to support people that are going through those struggles. But the idea that a school could be making those decisions with my child behind my back. Mm -hmm. And you're right. If it, we, we wouldn't probably have seen that had they not gone to the mm -hmm. draconian measures that they did that gave us an opportunity to take a peek behind the curtain. Because as we noticed from the preview of mind polluters, the, they don't, the teachers can't tell you. 
Mm -mm. They're not even allowed to tell you what they're teaching your children in the school. Well, many times they don't even know because there's nothing standing between the child and that device. And if it's computer adaptive, then they're, they're moving through these different competencies. The teacher doesn't even see it. So it's not real. They're just a facilitator. What does it mean to devote your life to the truth? Does it mean investigating communist subversion here in America? Does it mean exposing the deadly fentanyl crisis in the Midwest? Or spending late nights and covering deep government corruption? Does it mean persevering over 20 years, even after four masked men set one of our printing presses on fire last year? Because at a time when America's traditional values are under attack, It's the responsibility of righteous journalists to uphold truth and tradition. Business runs on technology, and human beings are creatures of habit. Unfortunately, not all our habits are good. Technology, when it works, is supposed to make our lives easier, creating routines that allow us to protect customer data, track our progress, forecast the future, communicate better, and move much faster. So you need technology solutions that work when you're not working or simply not paying attention. Smart technology solutions, making the complicated uncomplicated. My American dream is to help you stay healthy and energized so you can live your American dream. Our American dream is equipping future generations of American dreamers. My American dream is to protect my community so they can live their American dream. My American dream is to bring you some spice and flavor to your life. Our American dream is ensuring what's most valuable to you. Our American dream is creating opportunities for healthcare providers so they can have their American dreams. My American dream is serving our business community and advocating for all of your American dreams. Huh, that's mm -hmm. an interesting point of view. I didn't realize that. So they don't even know. Wow. <laughs> that's another show. Huh? <laughs> yeah, so, so big challenges. So you have to show up. You have right. to show up. And, and, that's, and, I, and I feel like start somewhere. And I started with, as far as I'm concerned, with the school board because mm -hmm. I'm a, you know, I'm a mama bear with my grandchildren. Um, but city council's next. It's on my radar. And I've got to organize my life now around all of these pieces. And you're, you're paying attention to the college board. You know, yeah. you don't miss those things. And you have gone down to Austin and you're paying it. So you're able to get down there and actually speak to these groups in a way mm -hmm. that I never have. Um, so... We've you don't have a lot of free time, do you? I mean, I, no. <laughs> I mean, it's what she does. It's when a full-time job, and I can't, I yeah. can't seem to find any pay for it. <laughs> Welcome to my world. I could be a lobbyist, but then I'd have to cross over to the dark side. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we've could, there's, there's something that we can do, and I hope this conversation kind of lightens it up a little bit because... <laughs> Uh, it's uncomfortable, yeah. but it, it will it require some restructuring of your life to pay attention to the pieces mm -hmm. that are going on. Yeah. But by all means, the opposite of, of looking at this closer, the opposite of acting, is allowing it to happen on our watch. Mm -hmm. yeah. That I find unacceptable. And we have the ability to take action. We forget that. We, we, we think we don't have time, and like, you, like you've just shown, how much you, you actually can do. And social media has been a perfect distraction from our ability to create yeah, action. That's the truth. It's awkward coming from somebody that does a lot of shows and speaks mm. about it, but at the same time, people say, I don't have time, I don't have time. Like, you just got in a, a Facebook argument for four hours of your day. You could have spent that same amount yeah. of time planning it differently and going to a school board meeting or going and volunteering. If you're a social justice warrior, all the complaints, how about go and, and volunteer in the inner city? Like, actually take action for the beliefs that you have are wrong in this world instead of you're either creating or consuming. And so when I do go and show up to those, uh, the, you know, a public event or a 
public meeting, I will splice out my testimony and share it. Mm -hmm. So I use social media all the time, but yeah. I'm doing it in a creating content right. and informing. Right. Mm -hmm. Instead of trolling. No, absolutely. Social media. So I social media has got its power. No, 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 no. But social media, I, you know why I do like trolling once in a while? Not being the <laughs> troll, but getting trolled is it allows you to learn how to have a conversation with people that have a completely different belief system than you. It also boosts the algorithm. So <laughs> <laughs> when you're censored, <laughs> it bumps you up True. when you engage the trolls. Any kind of engagement. But honestly, I think that's the thing we just, a lot of times people that are on our side that are that quote unquote silent majority that I spoke of earlier, they are not sure how to have that conversation. So seeing how the other sides communicates, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's almost practice. It's all, even though it's become dangerous, it's more practice to see they actually think that way. That's not, this isn't a drill, this isn't a fake person, this so is a real So then how human can being. I help have a better conversation? Exactly, and you yeah. meet them with listening. And I, I said this. Like, bless your heart. Bless let your me, heart. Let me help you along It's like here. a hot poker. <laughs> um, but the, <laughs> no, but this is honestly, in the beginning of the George Floyd era, this is exactly where I realized there was just a miscommunication. Yeah. This mm -hmm. comes from anything right now, sure. from vaccines to social justice, et cetera, is we meet, typically both sides yell at each other. Yeah. And the best way to actually have the conversation is to meet with empathy. And I know I said that was a, a dangerous term, but we can use that weapon against. Meet with listening and empathy, and then build trust in the person that you completely oppose, even if you have to turn the other cheek, but be ready to have just an arsenal of weaponry and information and facts truth. when they are w truth, when they are willing to go, something was fishy on the news, what do you think about that? And you're like, oh, that's my window. And you take advantage of it then instead of force feed it early. True. That's a very good point. You have to build the relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're humans. Yeah. For now, we got to yeah. work. Gotta, we got. <laughs> That's Sorry. funny. You'll have to keep listening because there is some stuff going on, even on that side. You know, uh, really, there's we've got there's so much information to get out in a loving way so that we can actually impact change in the community. Because that's that's just it. Uh, if if we don't, then we then a lot of people are going to be taking making choices in their life that that are pretty dangerous mm -hmm. and uh, under the guise of, oh, that doesn't that sound good? And, you know, all, what's the, all that glitters is not gold, right? It doesn't all, it, it's going to be, it's going to, do you really think, I should put it this way, do you really think that any nefarious thing is going to come to you and say, I am evil and I'm trying to eat you and I want to destroy everything about you, whack. I mean, that's, that's not how evil comes in. Evil comes in. Yeah, uh, it's a serpent. It's just, it comes in really nice. Doesn't mm -hmm. that sound good? Doesn't that look good? Ecology. It looks sweet. Yes. It tastes sweet. Yeah. You know, social equity. Yes. Who could be opposed to that? Well, it's not about being opposed to that. Do you understand what that means in the context in which they're saying it? That's a totally different conversation. So um, I appreciate you being here today and helping us. Uh, and thank you so much for participating. And well, thank it's all you. on the line. I'm excited to share that. So be, uh, uh, be paying attention to that. Let us know how, to, how, how can people reach you, Lynn? You can reach me at, uh, well, I'm on Twitter, Lynn S. Davenport. I tweet a lot. Uh, you can reach me at ldaven at me.com. That's my email. And I'm on social media, I mean, uh, Social Impact Podcast. Social Impact Podcast. Yes. You'll find that on the OBBM okay. network. So make sure you you, you uh, uh, subscribe to to Spotify and get all of that. And where do we find you? Find me on hashtag be the change .com, spelled out hashtag be the change .com, and uh, be the change USA on YouTube and Facebook. Fabulous. I hope you've enjoyed this because I sure have and it's been quite a day and now we're at a spot where I'm sure all of us are like, we can't are, even talk. <laughs> but we are out of time. So until next time, <laughs> uh, my name is Susan Hamilton. You've been watching Offbeat Business TV and listening to the OBBM Network. You can find us on Spotify, Roku, Rumble, uh, Gab TV, Cloud Hub TV. Guys, we're there. Join us and help us spread the word about how to do great business, how to do a better job standing up for your local community. Until next time. Thank you.